open up my screen here. Hi, and, Yvonne. How are you? <laughs> introduce our, I don't think he really <laughs> needs an introduction, but Jim Bonner is you? here with High Tech, and he will be our spotlight speaker for today. What an exciting topic. He's going to be talking about mapping, and everybody wants to know about mapping with their drones. So what an awesome topic. Thank you, Jim. And I'm going to give you the spotlight. I, got, I, can, I can see everybody's smiling face. I want to ask a question first. And uh, via a show of hands, uh, show me, tell me if you've not done any mapping at all. If you haven't had a chance to do any mapping at all. Let me see a show of hands of people that have not done any mapping. One, two, three, four, five. Great, great. We're getting a few. That's terrific. The reason why I asked that is because I wanna make sure that I'm not addressing a bunch of facts that everybody here already knows, right? So of course, in a mapping lesson, an online mapping lesson with no PowerPoints and stuff, I'm gonna need you to probably grab something to take notes from because you're gonna to want to have, uh, you're gonna to wanna to be able to refer to some of these things because I'm gonna be sending you to some websites and things like that to help you out, okay? Okay. So one of the first things I'd like Can to Can I start interrupt with. one second, Jim? Sorry. Sure. Can you turn the volume up just a smidge? Yeah, I sure can. How's that? Is that any better? Yeah. We there love. we go. Sorry about Thank that, guys. You. Yep. All I right. can even be better if you want. <laughs> okay. Take it away. All right, so let's oh my gosh, ahead. almost Barry White for a second. Woo! <laughs> you know, I used to do radio. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's start with what I'd like to uh, kind of categorize or classify this lesson into is I'm going to stick primarily to aircraft that fit within the parameters of the brokerage house services. So traditionally those services like drone deploy, drone up, drone base, droners IO, uh, Fouts, help me out anymore. I, I think that covers most of them. But, yeah, you got most of them. Yeah, generally, all of those uh, platforms utilize a DJI or equivalent type platform like Unique or something like that, where they can send missions to you. Um, where you know, in very much like an, an Uber, an Uber environment, where you pick up your phone and a mission comes to you via your phone through Droners IO or something like that. Um, all of those aircraft have to comply with their platform so they can send the missions and, and share those things like that. So that's what I'm sticking with. I'm gonna, that's where I'll start with, because I would think it's a fair assumption that most of us here probably have a DJI drone. Most of us here probably operate a DJI drone that operates under Go 4. Those are the, that, that's kind of the condition we're going to start with is that you're, we're working with a drone that works under Go 4. Um, the Mavic Pro series, the Mavics, the Sparks, the Phantoms, the Inspires, the Mem 210s, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of them um, that do that. So in the event you're brand new and you want to start mapping, I'm going to teach you, I'm going to set you up with a way to start to learn mapping at, a, at your pace that's as cheap, if not free, uh, as low cost as possible. So one of the things I'll start with is that with these services like drone up, drone base, drone deploy, uh, I'm sorry, drone base, I'll just stick with drone base. Yeah, maybe that's not correct. <laughs> Anytime you sign up with these folks, you're gonna get a couple of weeks of free service for you to try it out. I'm gonna give you a little warning here, folks, and that is, be cautious when you sign up for these free services because that two weeks is going to go by in a flash and you're not going to get anything done for your free service, for your free sample. So I'm going to, your first note, your first thing you're going to, you're going to write down PIX4D capture, P-I-X number four, letter delta, the word capture. PIX4D capture is the free capture program offered by PIX4D that lets you map. Um, the PIX40 program allows you to collect images at no cost. It is a free mapping program. Now, it doesn't do any processing, but it'll go out, fly your mission, and let you collect data. The next one you're going to write down is Maps Made Easy. 
mapsmadeeasy.com. Maps Made Easy has a awesome um, program where if you buy a drone from them, and I'm not asking, I'm not suggesting, I'm just giving you the program. Uh, if you buy a drone from them, you get a certain number of credits, if you will, to process maps. You buy a drone from Drones Made Easy and you can process from Maps Made Easy at a discount price. But even if you didn't buy your drone from them, they process maps and my numbers may not be correct. It might be now 100 images. I think they changed it. It used to be 250 or something like that, where they'll process your map of 100 images for free, absolutely free. You'll be on the bottom of the waiting list and you'll be last in queue, but you send your images to Maps Made Easy before you go to bed and your map will be ready for you first thing in the morning. So there is a great way right there to get started mapping with your drone for little to no cost at all. Then what I'm gonna suggest is once you have a Pix4D collector, start playing with Pix4D collector. I mean, you'll find, I mean, we can do an advanced session one day where I bring up screens and show you how to do this, but it's pretty, pretty explanatory and pretty simple. And there's even a tutorial on uh, Maps Made Easy on how to process. So I would suggest that when you get 2D or uh, Pix4D capture and start collecting some data. So suggestions from my end are things like, look around your neighborhood, look around your part of town, see, find some construction sites, find a construction site or two. Then maybe spend a few weeks every Saturday or Sunday. And I say Saturday or Sunday, so you're not there when that construction site is active, okay? You're not bothering anybody that's trying to do their job while you're trying to do your job, okay? Start collecting the data um, ahead of time. Find a, find a site that works for you. Spend a few Saturdays or Sundays collecting data. Go out, fly a mission. When you set these missions, you're gonna set little parameters on a map and you're gonna have things like overlap. We'll discuss that in a minute. You're gonna set those things and the drone is literally gonna take off and fly this mission by itself. This is that amazing aha moment in a drone pilot's career where they launch that drone on an autonomous mission for the first time. It is mind blowing. <laughs> um, but you'll want to do that several times and start to collect your data. So after a few weeks of flying and you've got four or five collection sets, now's the time that you sign up for your free two week drone deploy, drone base, PIX4D, whatever you want to do. Sign up for your free two-week trial, and you've got days and days worth of data that you can upload in that small two weeks. I'm telling you, I'd rather you spend your two weeks of your free trial processing data, not collecting data, okay? So you're going to get picks 4 d collector. You're going to go out. You're going to collect some data. You're going to collect some, some sites, some sites. Um, picks 4 d capture. When you launch the program, there's going to be these four uh, maybe, uh, Fouts, is there five? I think there's only four types of missions on P4D. Yeah, okay, cool. So you have things like a crosshatch. You have things like a regular uh, lawnmower pattern. And I'm going to ask the trivia question if anybody knows what's that called. Then you're going to have things like the uh, point of interest orbit and um, what's the first one? A linear, top, uh, linear mission. Oh, uh, sorry. Look at center on the grid. My suggestion to you is when you go out is you get everything, collect everything, go to your site, create your map, but then fly a mission that's a 2D map, fly the mission that's a 3D map, fly the mission that's a video orbit, fly the mission that's a uh, th uh, 3D map looking at grid center. <laughs> All of those things, collect, 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 because those are the things that you start to put together in a package for your client. So have the, have the mindset that when you are going onto site, that you're collecting the full package. Don't spend your time driving somewhere, planning a map, getting there, setting up, flying the map, and leaving with only one map collected. No, 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 no. That, that's, not, that's not good time management at all. If you're all the way there, fill the book. Shoot every mission style. You know, this will be different once you have clients. Once you have clients asking for maps, you're not going to 
fill the book, so to speak, unless they're paying for you. So that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about you learning how to map. So I want you to shoot all the data. So you start to watch the aircraft's performance. You start to learn how to set the map parameters, things like that. Those things happening uh, kind of by trial and error, if you will, often mean a whole lot more to a pilot because the lessons are set in versus reading something and just going out there and following the directions and not kind of understanding. So you'll want to start doing that um, as much as you can. Build up a nice little database of collection, sign up for a free service, and start processing. Now, I also like to uh, mention Maps Made Easy because there are scripts, I almost said prescription, <laughs> or prescription services. <laughs> there are subscription services like Drone Deploy that uh, are A, fairly expensive, but B, let you process without any cost. Then you go to a service like Pix4D where there's a cost, but then there's a, a, a cost to process. So now let's backtrack that back, back to Maps Made Easy. And Maps Made Easy not only gives you a allotment of free processing, but you can buy tokens or credits to process even larger maps, which for a starting independent pilot is absolutely the way to go. It's a pay to play. Um, and you can easily, and when I was doing my, my first uh, rounds, I would go out and collect data. Then I would go back and I'd sit down at the computer and I'd buy $20 worth of credits at Maps Made Easy. And I would easily process my map. 600, 800,000 pictures, easily process that with 20 bucks for the credit and have a large balance left. Um, but the beauty about that is, is I only paid when I use the service. So if you, do, unless you have 10, 15 clients feeding that, you know, feeding that beast to pay for that heavy subscription to drone deployer or Pix4D, Maps Made Easy is a great way to go because you pay to play. You, uh, you pay to process the maps as is. And it's also very, um, the costing and stuff is all very upfront when you go to uh, set up your processing. So you're going to know what it's going to cost you. And the truth about that is if you know what it's going to cost you, you can adjust your rates. So your client pays for that, not you, right? Make sure that your rate can absorb that $20 hit for uh, map processing at Maps Made Easy. Then, um, then once, you have, once you have that and you have processed, there's a simple process to export the data. You want to get your JPEGs and you want to get your KMLs and KMZs and you want to get that data because that's the data you end up sharing with a client. Okay. Now that we have that, I'm going to kind of come back to the beginning a little bit. We're going to talk a little bit about map settings. Okay. So mapping folks, now that we kind of know a little bit about it, what mapping really is, it is simply stitching together multiple images to create a single image. Now, there are two types of maps primarily, a 2D and a 3D map. If you're doing a 2D map, the camera is in a nadir or a straight down position, you're looking straight down and it's taking pictures and you're gonna stitch them together to make a single map. Um, things that are important, and since you have your notepad here, one of the things I'll tell you to keep in mind are overlaps. Now there are overlaps in your collection and then an overlap in your map itself. So let's talk about these overlaps for a second. When your camera is in the down position and taking a picture, it's kind of got this, you know, this kind of a downward look, right? The, the footprint. Where the footprint on the ground of the image is relative to the next image is gonna be called overlap. So if I have two little post-it notes here, and this is what my footprint on the map looks like. When I take my second picture, how much of it is overlapping, right? That's, that's what we talk about overlap. So there are percentages, you set a percentage on this overlap and I'll start out with the minimum. You cannot do any map less than 50% overlap. That is one half of that image overlapped over the other image, okay? So you can't do anything less than that. You can certainly do more. Um, I'll talk about company, company-wide standards. We have some standards that we use because we get ground sampling data or ground sampling information based on altitude and overlap. So I traditionally like to run my maps for a non-precision 
method at a 0.5 inch of ground sampling distance, which is fair. Thoughts, would you agree? Well, that's pretty fair. I mean, 0.5 is, is a good value. It's certainly not going to put the building in the right place. It's not that type of measurement. It's not a survey grade map, but at 0.5, I'm, I'm, I'm getting enough overlap that my images are looking great and my clients are happy with what they see, right? Because it's all visual. So um, I tend to err on the caution of overlap heavy on my front and back and maybe not so heavy on my side overlap. Here's why. As the drone is flying down the road, taking pictures. So picture, 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 you know, flying down the road. As it's doing that, this is the front overlap. So it's flying this line. For me, it doesn't matter every time I take a picture, 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 I don't care. Now, when we come to side overlap, the more side overlap I have, the more rows I'm going to have in my map. And that's time. So if I have, let's say an 85% side overlap, an 85%, can you guys see that? I don't know if you can see it. An 85% side overlap, I'm going to have a lot of bars. But if I shorten it down to 75%, I'm going to have less time in the air and I'm going to have less images. Doesn't mean my ground sampling distance is going to be bad if I have turned up my front overlap. Okay. Okay. So now you have the overlap, a little bit of the background on the overlap of the image. Now we have to talk about fuzzy data. That's what I call fuzzy data. And when you have a map and you are flying that map, you need to be, a bit, just like we have overlap here, the truth is, is that your client might give you a KML or a KMZ outlining what they want inspected. Let's just say that they gave you a map that had a red box and they say, this is the map we want you to do. You have to understand that your client wants good data all the way up to the edge of that map, right? So if you fly your map right exactly on their map, as your drone is going down this line and you're taking this picture, 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 you have nothing on the other side overlapping it. So those edges, the data starts to get funny, fuzzy, twisted, warped. When these programs compile and stitch, if there isn't data, they make it up. It blurs, it blends, it warps. They just try to fill the empty space with data they know. It knows, it's seen. So sometimes, and I've got a great examples of a picture that's 500 feet away gets put into a place where there was missing data. <laughs> it just tried to fill it. Um, so we want to have an overlap outside of what the customer is asking for. So, so the customer says, this is the map I want. I'm actually going to fly 15% over the edge of what that client wanted to make sure that all the way up to the edge that they asked for was clean and precise data. So you always want to oversize your, your footprint or your plot to make sure that the edges have the same amount of overlap that the middle of the map does. Because you don't want it looking great in the middle and as he gets or as they get to the edge of their project, the data starts getting fuzzy, warped, twisted, muddled, muddied. Um, so you want to have that overlap. So you have front and side overlap relative to images. Then you have the mapping overlap relative to the size of the plot you're going to fly. Those three things right there are probably one of the, one of the things people make the largest mistakes in when they're beginning. Um, I've seen people go, gosh, I want a great map. I'm gonna do 95% overlap on each front and side and everything. Oh my gosh, folks, holy smokes, you have just shot yourself in the foot, especially if you are paying for processing, because now your map is way more expensive than it has to be. Um, you understand, understand the client's needs, understand how good your data can be, and start to work with those. I mean, traditionally here at high tech, you know, we're 65, 75 on overlaps most of the time. Sometimes we'll be at 85. We were at 85 for some grow facilities. Um, but it's generally around those ranges because the data is just fine. Volumetric data still works. Um, the client can see exactly what they're looking at. So it, it's, it's not, this is not a case where more is better. You can over data, um, over produce. And where it comes in is first, if you're paying, paying to play, it's gonna cost you too much, right? You're paying to process, you're processing too much. And it's going to add time to that processing. So if you're processing a map with 500 images, it's going to process in a couple of hours. If you're processing a map with 5,000 images, it's going to take a day, right? It's going to take a little longer. 
So those are the kind of the balances that we start to work with when we when you're mapping is understanding that those overlap values where they kind of need to be. And those are the things that you do while you're collecting your data and you're playing around. When you have the free program and you're starting to go to these construction site, sites, sites, sorry. <laughs> when you're going to these construction sites, start to play with your numbers. Do a map at 50% overlap, both sides. Take a look at it. You'll go, ah, oh, that sucks. Do it at 65%. How does that look for you? Do it at 70, 85, do it. Process those maps, especially if you're working on the free aspect of Maps Made Easy. Um, and how you can simply do this. And, and, and let me just suggest this to you guys. You know, find a neighborhood park, find or, or even your own house or your own apartment building or something. Create a map that you can easily replicate time and time again. I don't mean replicate because it's automatically replicated. I mean, fly conveniently, right? Someplace you're not driving across, across town to, to go fly for 10 minutes. Make it convenient, but do the map in multiple variations of those settings. Do it at 100 feet, 75, 75. Do it at 100 feet, 65, 65. Do it at 200 feet, 75, 75, 65, 65. See what I'm saying? Do those. And each time you see that map, you'll start to have this better understanding of what those numbers do to your imagery, right? And as long as you have done this on the free side, where you went out and you collected, you did all these different maps uh, beforehand, then you signed up for the two weeks free and you started dumping those things in. You started dumping those jobs in. You'll get a lot out of it that way. Uh, I The calls I get most of the time are the people call me up going, oh man, I ran out of my free uh, my free subscriptions over. Well, because he signed up for it and had had to go to work three days and all. I mean, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. Plan accordingly. Don't sign up. And when I was doing my Grossmont College class, we would collect data for a week before we signed up. Then I'd get the whole class to sign up for Maps Made Easy and we'd throw it down the pipe because you only get two weeks. And I would rather you spend that time processing versus collecting, right? Um, but with all of those, I didn't state that, you know, I, I think I did maybe that Maps Made Easy processes free smaller maps, right? So create this smaller map, 50, 60, 70, uh, 100 foot by 100 foot somewhere. I don't know, something like that. It's a, a playground. Go to your neighborhood park, do the playground. But do that to where you can do it in multiple formats, multiple altitudes with different overlays and that the same exact map. Just launch the map, change the altitude, send it again, change the altitude, send it again, come back, change the settings, send it again. Start to document that and notice. You will create something. You will create a great understanding of yourself in your mind of what that person can expect. And you already have a great uh, foundation of what you would do to make that happen. Because as your clients start asking for these services, they don't understand anything about what we do. So they're going to start telling you about what they want, right? One of the things I hear a lot is, oh, I just want Google Earth. I want it to look like Google Earth. When they say that to me, I just smile ear to ear because I know I'm going to blow their socks off when they see my map. Because we just... <laughs> We are far better than Google Earth, but sometimes that's their only frame of reference. That's the only thing they know. So when they think of aerial pictures, a lot of times people think of Google Earth. So you start to show them that that better or that uh, map is far more detailed than that. Maybe you even show them how to put it right on that Google Earth. So they're using Google Earth to look at your map. Uh, those are the types of things that start to gel with you when you do this repetitively, pe repetitive, fly the map, do the data, look at it, change the data, change the map, fly it, collect it. Those are very effective. Um, and they'll mean a lot to you as you're talking to your client, because your client's going to start talking about, uh, talking about what they want. And in your mind, you're already formulating how you can meet that need. Having a basis for this is, is pretty, uh, pretty easy to come by in this market with all of these free services. You know, five years ago, to get to this point, you would have spent $10,000 on mapping to get to a point where you understand it. Now it's available for free. Maps Made Easy, Pix4D Capture, those are your two greatest starting places. Um, there are also, I mean, come on, who hasn't started going to YouTube college, right? There are tons of YouTube videos out there. And just like me, people have different flavors of different ways they like to do things. There is no set solid path. There is no 
only one exclusive way. These numbers will, are all variable. Um, it's your job to figure out those variations to meet that client's need the best. And what I mean by the best, I mean taking as little out money out of your pocket to satisfy that client as possible. That's what's important. It's real easy to get into the um, overspending game. You know, drone collectors, people that just buy drones because it's the next one out. Well, have you made money with your last one yet? I don't know. Um, drone collectors is one way and subscription services. They are expensive, folks. And I've seen, I've seen folks who want to get into mapping sign up for these services and you know what a, a drone deploys what $3,600 a year something like that yeah 3600 bucks a year so you pony up $3,600 to get this and you don't have any clients Ooh, that hurts folks that's not a real solid business plan um, whereas you can do this on the free do this on the cheap and grow into it start building your client base with maps made easy and pix 40 collector then when you're when you're Clients have started coming to you and asking for volumetric measurements and things like that, that the more complicated services offer, step up to a subscription. Because by then, you'll also have a really good understanding of how these systems are starting to work together with each other. Um, and that brings to me to the point that one of the things that people seem to not connect, um, th th there's a big disconnect in map processing and collecting. So I want to make sure everybody understands this really clear. If you collect with PIX40 Collector, you go out and take pictures and it flies your drone, does not matter who you process with. The image data is the image data. Metadata is on that image. Doesn't matter if you process it in PIX4D, maps made easy, if you drone, does not matter. Those things are interchangeable and swappable. You can fly with drone deploy and process in PIX4D. You can process, you can fly in PIX4D and process at Maps Made Easy. They do not matter. One of the other things I'll, I want to I want to tell, how am I doing on time, Desi? Well, we are actually at our limit, but I think everybody's enjoying your information. So. <laughs> Surprise! Take it, the, take it to the limit. All right. Well, let, let me let me wrap it up. Let me wrap it up with 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 a, with a last with a closing comment. Um, where people end up failing often is, like I said earlier, signing up for the services and not getting taking advantage of the free processing, but simply by not going out and doing it, doing it, doing it. If you are ready to start mapping, commit yourself to it. Don't just do one on a Saturday and then come back in August and do another because you're, you're, it's not going to do anything for you. Literally, find the site near you and fly it, collect it, fly it, collect it, fly it, collect it. Um, repetitive. It's There's so many things that happen there. And well, one other thing that happens during this process is you're going to build your workflow. You're going to find what works for you, to pack your gear to get to your site, to fly your mission, to collect your data. Those are the things that I will tell you as a professional made one of the largest differences in my success with my clients. And that was my field presence. When I showed up, did it look like I knew what I was doing or was I fumbling, bumbling, stumbling around, right? It looked like I knew what I was doing. I faked it, <laughs> but it looked like I knew what I was doing <laughs> because I had practiced. And the program wasn't gonna throw me a curveball in front of my client. I, I appeared proficient. Um, and that's because in the very beginning, I spent weeks doing this by myself outside in the field at construction sites or other types of things, playgrounds, sculptures, art, pro whatever, fly it, go fly it. Yep. All right, I'll let you take that because I could, I could go another hour here, sorry. <laughs> do I need to buy a new drone to do this? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, yes. high tech offers a fantastic. <laughs> right. So two things that you mentioned that are really powerful, uh, Jim, which a lot of people underestimate is number one, the, pr the system that you used to obtain the free, you know, like you, that system is great, you know, because people don't understand that. And I remember when I first got into drones when the part 107 first came out, you know, people would say, I have a drone and I have a part 107. Now, what do I do? Exactly. So they think that spending money is going to make them successful. And that's not true. You have to calculate the return on your investment. 
Um, is it going to be a good ROI? And then second of all, is just the power of practice and being consistent. I mean, nobody is successful. Literally success is a system. That's what it is. It's a system. And what a system is, is your habits. Mm -hmm. First you make your habits and then your habits make you. So being out there and committing to one thing instead of trying to be everything is just, you know, that's what you're so great at. And I really appreciate that. Just that reiterating that. So well, you know, I, I mean, this is one of the things that, that uh, uh, straight up my, I mean, I, I would, I firmly believe that the successes that I've had are open to absolutely every one of us in this meeting mm -hmm. right, right here, right now. There, there is just a, and one of the, there, there are several rules of life. And one of the rules of life is, is that if I get wealthy, that doesn't prevent you from, I'm not taking the wealth that prevents you from being wealthy. Right. There's plenty of it to go around. And th in this job right here, uh, I don't know of many jobs right now that is this young in its infancy that gives back exactly what you put into it right now. And if you're going to sit on your couch and put 10 percent of your effort into this career, this is the career you want. That's exactly what you're going to get back. Mm -hmm. You put 100 percent in. I mean, look at the success stories in this room right? You put hundred percent in and it will pay back. I mean, and, and I'm not trying to sell you something. I'm not trying to sell you a vacuum cleaner, tell you how good it sucks. <laughs> no, this is real. And this, I, I'm finding this because that's the experience of both my students, uh, Desi's students. Um, that's what we're seeing. It's what the industry is doing for us right now. There is lots of room out here right now. I'm finding more work than pilots. And that's a good place to be. Yes. Definitely more work than pilots right now. Yep. yep. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you. That was amazing information. Thank you so much. And so, yes, everybody, kudos <laughs> and great job. Yes, thank you so much, Jim. Great job, Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Always. Just keep I your did. notes. Follow your notes. Do what you wrote down. All right. So I did put Jim's information into the chat. So when we're done, you want to make sure that you've saved the chat because you'll yep. have that in there. So if you wanted to put it in again, Jim, feel free to go ahead and enter it again. That way you can reach out to him. He's always been so helpful with everybody. So we thank you a lot. Yeah. And I got a quick example is I got, I got an email yesterday uh, about someone who was bidding on a job and had a couple of questions about airspace and luckily for me, the answers I gave him were better than what he expected. Um, but it still has a, the little bit of the concern here is for me is he's a 107 pilot and he was having questions about airspace. What? <laughs> what? No, with your 107, you should not be questioning airspace. You should know airspace by now. But I helped him out. I'm going to offer the, the same thing out here. If someone has my email address and you have a question about a map or something like that, you know, shoot me a KMZ, email me the KMZ. Let me take a look. I'll help you walk through your settings. No problem.